The book of Matthew was sharing today we are in episode three, in season three. I remember the team they devoted to evangelism, and that is you know spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Last day we took time to look at Christ and some of the examples uh, how he evangelized things that he did. We spoke about the Good Samaritan and we noted Christ's approach, the rich young ruler. And we wondered if Christ remember if he missed an opportunity to uh, introduce this guy to salvation, to the life. And then Nicodemus, we looked at Nicodemus and the conversation with Christ. When Christ just moved straight in and said, you must be born again. And then he gave two stories. Stories about the wind blowing, not knowing where it's coming from, nor where it's going. And about Moses' um, grand servant. And was saying that he would one day soon be on the cross um, to take upon himself the sins of this world. As we continue today, we want to look at one scripture from Romans chapter 10, verse 9. 9 and 10 it says, But if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And the NLT put it this way, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. How, how did he save Paul? Paul said, the spirit that called to save, in response to that question, how do we save? How do we never return a life? If you openly declare that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Are you convinced that this is the message of salvation? This is the message of the gospel? This is the message that we have been given to use to evangelize? And Paul was putting in the wide context about looking at God, here is Jesus God. If you accept, if you confess that the Father raised him from the dead, believe in your heart, there is, you shall be saved. Father, we give you thanks as we continue sharing today. We look to your Holy Spirit to lead us, to speak to us. We want to hear what he has to say to us today as we continue into this topic. Take us to death and heights. Open our spiritual eyes to receive revelation and a commitment in our heart to walk therein. Thank you, Father, in Christ's name. Amen and amen. What have you been sharing in response to this question? What have you been what have you been communicating to persons who want to know how to inherit eternal life? In his prayer to the Father in John 17, 3, Jesus said, and this is eternal life, that they may know you. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Philip, at one time, asked Jesus to show him, or to show them the Father. And Jesus responded in John 14, verse 9, He who has seen me, has seen the Father, and how can you say, show us the Father? Jesus spoke in all of his ministry time. He was presenting the Father to mankind. In John 17, he, he said, Father, I, I presented you. I manifested you before them. I spoke about you before them. And he was evangelizing. He was sharing, he was introducing men to Christ. To, uh, to God. And in verses 5 to 6, 
with John 17 it said and now father glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was I have magnified your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world Christ's evangelism activity was centered around sharing the story of God with mankind and so our question again would be, and we want to just make sure we get to the bone, we're bringing it home. How, what is your evangelism message? What is the story of your evangelism? And or what story you are presenting as you evangelize? Firstly, I want to challenge us to remove two concepts from our minds. The first is that thinking evangelism is about presenting a few selected verses. As I mentioned version 1 9, Roman 3 23, Roman 6 23. Remove from our minds that thinking that evangelism is about presenting a few selected scriptures. Evangelism, evangelism sorry, is about the whole Bible, the one story, the great story. The full story of God. The second concept that we must remove from our minds is that that word God refers only to the Father. Remove that from your mind. The word God refers to a Trinitarian team Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Triune God. So when we talk about presenting God's story, we are presenting the story of the Trinitarian team, the Triune God. And so evangelism is making God known to people, people who don't know God. And that is in, you don't understand it in the plural sense. And so God is best introduced to people through his story. He is best introduced to people through his story. People love stories. And people who love stories, they remember stories. And God in his wisdom set a structure for us to share his story as a his story will reveal who he is. And you remember in the context, not all minds, when we say who he is, we're speaking about the team, the Trinitarian team, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And God's story, brethren, it has a track record, a powerful track record in its ability to transform people's lives. Don't underestimate in any way the power of the Word of God to transform lives. For the Word of God is the story of God. In the book of Acts, we saw the early church begin to evangelize and what were they doing? They were sharing and you should take a time to look at the top of like Peter's sermon and the sharing of the, the apostles, the early believers. They were sharing the story of God as revealed through Jesus Christ. They were making Jesus Christ known. They were troubling the status quo and people were being saved. People were being saved. Jews were coming across to Christianity the Romans were accepting Christ, so the Gentiles accepted Christ. People were being saved when they heard the story of God. And here is the truth, brethren. If your evangelism does not have God as a central team, you are not evangelizing. And two, if your evangelism is merely pointing out someone's sinful state and leading them in the sinner's prayer, you are not evangelizing. They know that they are sinners enough. The conscience that God places in us brought or brings an awareness of our sinful state. And the sinner's prayer is an important prayer. But if your evangelism is all about revealing people's sinful state and taking them through the sinner's prayer, you are not evangelizing. Why? 
because you have not placed God, the story of God, up front and center in their hearts and lives. God and his love for mankind is not presented. I would just say are not presented because we focus in other areas. We focus on the sin issue and we miss the love issue, the central issue that God so loved the world that he sent a redeemer, the Messiah Jesus Christ, one of the triune God or member of the triune God, Godhead, to come and rescue us. It is God's redemption story. God's redemption story is God's story. And the word revealed the redemption story from Genesis to Revelation. From since the fall of man, God started making action, clear demonstrated action to redeem mankind. He first spoke it, the seed of the woman shall bruise your head, silver. And then he began implementing his word. And there was the story of God being revealed in redemption. Now the Bible is a collection of stories and characters. But all of these stories are connected to one unified story. And that unified story is about God. The triune God. Every story in God's word whispers something concerning the triune God. Every story. In fact, my father law he got saved from the Samson story. And I found it truly amazing. Um, this is a we found it truly amazing. Because he was, as it were, near offended by the fact that Samson became blind and God allowed it. Incidentally, my father-in-law, my father-in-law, he was all his life an educator, um, retired as a dean, um, and he, he always spoke from the place of logic and reasoning and science. And we would always have these little talks, chant each other. But one day he raised his hand to the story and he had just lost his sight. He was being challenged. And when I heard the, the arguments and I heard the concern, it was extremely clear that God was working upon his heart. He was receiving God's story through Samson's incident. And I had the privilege to show how Samson conquered and how Samson became a man of God. He, he won more in the kingdom of God at his death than in his, his life. Later on, we will hear that he gave his heart to the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, scripture says, God has transmitted his very substance into every scripture. This is from the Passion Translation. He has transmitted his very substance into every scripture, for it is God breathed. It will empower you by his instruction and correction, give you the strength to take to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. Then you will be God's servant, fully mature and perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment God gives you. And remember we read or we referred to um, last week in Luke 24 when Christ met the disciples on the road to um, Emmaus and he spoke to them from beginning with Moses and all the prophets he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning him the story of God and then go down in that same chapter Luke 24 this was after Christ was resurrected and he met the disciples he said to them when I was with you before I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. And you open their minds to understand the scriptures. But 
what was written by Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. And he said, yes, it is written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. Note how all the stories, from Genesis to Revelation, all connected to one story, God's story of redemption. John 1 says that the world became flesh, or in essence, the story of redemption became flesh, or the story of redemption became humanity, and died for us. Amen. But while you reflect on God's story and his story of redemption, we who are saved, we are in God's story. We can't ever overemphasize that. Because you will discover as you know more and more of God from reading the scriptures, you will discover your own story. Because therein, from beginning to ending of our earthly sojourn, there is God. He is there. And that gives us a sense of security. A sense of security in knowing that your story is tightly connected to God's. That is the God's story. Now, all the Bible characters in God's story are not perfect people. They are not necessarily good life models for us to adopt. But, God in his wisdom chose them because he wanted to connect us to their story. And in so doing, in connecting us to their stories, he's connecting us to himself. And that's the connection I want you to see. They are not necessarily all, and clearly you will discover that as you read this God story, um, not, not models for us to adopt. There are some aspects of their lives that we can adopt. And some aspects of their lives, we see ourselves clearly in them. For me, like a Jacob. But God is using these people who are deeply flawed to show his faithfulness and his redemption plan being executed one life at a time. As we read the stories in scripture and the lives of these Bible characters, we are moved to consider our own lives and to consider how faithful God is to us. Yes, God we serve to create new results in us, transform hearts and lives in us. God has a purpose and in his wisdom, he placed all of these flawed characters in the story to make us know that you belong here too. You are welcome here too. And the person to whom you are witnessing belong here too in my story. I have come to redeem flawed men. And you have now the privilege, the obligation, and the joy to carry my story to flawed men around you, or flawed people around you. And that's my redemption power work in their lives. In looking at God's story, and looking at our lives in the story, we see Him differently. We see the world differently. We begin to see life differently. We see other people differently. We see ourselves, and we see eternity through different methods as we get into God's world and read the story. Look at some of the Bible characters. I'll just pull a few examples. Noah, we know Noah right now, the Bible study on Tuesdays. And this beautiful brother, we call him a brother because he's part of the, the family of, of the redeemed. And you know the story after coming out of the ark, Noah began his, his, his career in gardening. He made wine, drank wine, drank wine, and was drunk, and this other video, drunk, drunk and eager. And God placed that story in the story. Why? 
Because in case there are some persons who drink and they are drunk around you, there's a space. There is an open door in God's heart and in God's story for them to join. They will not be the first. The others go there before. Abraham, to save his neck, Abraham allowed twice he allowed men to walk away with his wife. <coughs> Sarah. To save his life. He pushed Sarah to the truck, but he was saying now all the time. Say you're my sister. Because if these guys know that you're my wife, they will kill me, take you. And he allowed these guys to go home with his wife. Flawed. What about <coughs> sorry, Lot? Lot was mad. He was mad by his his aptitude to make poor choices. And I mean his Rebecca. She was very manipulative. Let's keep in mind. Jacob. Or should think this is um, let's go to Isaac, his father. He was he was hell-bent on having his own way. Hell-bent on not taking on God. Jacob, he was the biggest trick standing in the in the Bible. Had a scheme, thinking ahead, always have a way around. Rachel, she was jealous and she was a thief. She stole the father's uh, idol God. Uh, Moses, he had a temper problem. Rehab, she was a prostitute, a real prostitute. Samson, that we spoke about him just now, he had a soft spot for women. He could come be compared to Solomon though. There are thousands of them. And he, for both of them, I got sorry. David, he committed adultery and then murder. Elijah, the great prophet, he suffered from fear, running from Jezebel, and depression, suicidal. And God allowed all of these characters to be in his story. Why? Because his story is redemption story. If he can transform their lives, he can transform our lives. And he can transform the lives of those he has called us to take his story to. Christ said, oh, I did it, Lord. I magnified you before the men you gave to me. And this is the mantle that God has given to us. Christ said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel, you know, is the story of God. So, as you see your life in Bible characters, it helps you to approach and see your failure from a different perspective, a different understanding. And the shackles and the pressures of condemnation collapse because I have met with the love of God, the heart of God, the person of God. And this is great news that we have to share with all who are perplexed and are condemned and accused and feel they, can, they, they cannot be saved. Being saved or being uh, a child of God belongs to those goody people. Show me goody people in the Bible. And there are more, there are things of more to show you. But we have a privilege to share the story of God, redemption story to all. God can transform people. If God can transform those people in his story as recorded in the word of God, and he allowed, he instructed, he, he, he brought them into the story. If God can do that, God can transform you. God can transform me. So how do we evangelize? We speak about the power. That's what we share. We evangelize by telling God's story. And we can start at any point in the story. Any character in the story we can pull. We start in sharing God's story and leave the space and the room for the Holy Spirit to allow, uh, to take the story forward. He is the one who brings conviction. He is the one who, who brings light of darkness and transforms people's lives. Understand, evangelism is a process. We said a good storyteller does not hurry the story. A good storyteller recognizes the process. Evangelism is a process. I can tell you from my own space, many of the persons who I introduce to Christ will in my workspaces, my colleagues and staff, because it allowed for a con 
continuing sharing this story, living this story, and giving the Holy Spirit the walk in their hearts and walk in their lives. You must not rush the process. And I'm going to close with this. You must not rush the process. The process, in fact, we must honor the process of evangelism and know that God is in the process. God is woken. As he's woken by Father Law, woken from the story of Samson, it was a God's work to bring him to a place of salvation. And that was our prayer. Our prayer was that God will save him. The whole house was saved but him. How would we say him be saved? We had all of the music, all of the sharing, all of the discussion. But God started with Samson and brought it home. God is in the process. The world says something about a phrase that you know, the devil in the details. Well, whatever they're speaking about, that's not what we say. We're saying evangelism is a process. We must honor the process of evangelism and know that God is in the process, working on the hearts of men to transform them. That's great. Father, we give you thanks as we continue to share on this powerful call and wonderful privilege you give us to share the gospel as we evangelize. Thank you for opening our eyes to understand what is the gospel. It began in Genesis and continued into Revelation. Oh God, we pray that we will see ourselves in your word, in your story. And we see others, Lord, in the story and be patient, because you have been patient with us. And to know that nothing is impossible with you. No one is too, too far, far gone from you. So we see the characters in your world, how you transform lives. We see in our own lives how you have been transforming, how you transformed us. And we know that he will do it. So give us, Lord, a commitment to be devoted to evangelism in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.